Hey guys, thought I'd do a voiceover. This goofy, I, I'm just a glutton for punishment, I know. Uh, but if I want to get a different camera other than a GoPro, I have to either order it online or, you know, or go to Medford, which is an hour and a half, three hour round trip. Um, but anyway, the, the, the GoPros are handy because I can just go right here in town and, and get one. But I had two of them GoPro 12s, and uh, the one that was actually working really well, <laughs> I was working on a feller buncher over in Lakeview, and I had it on the boom, and I think I left it on the boom. I never could find the son of a gun again. Anyway, the this one here has got that wind reduction noise turned on somewhere, but it's weird. Those Both these cameras were GoPro 12s, but the software is, like, different. Well, I updated this one, too, just the other night, thinking, well, maybe I'll... I'll update it and it'll have the same menu options as the other one did and I can turn that off. Well, I'll be damned if I can find it. It's totally different. They're both GoPro 12 blocks, but the 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 menu options and the way they operate are different. I don't, I don't know what the deal is. Anyway, um, I'm going out to a New Holland bill wagon. It's, I think this video was recorded on Monday. I I actually finally took a Sunday, most of the Sunday off. I <clears throat> had one of my buddies there. He he's got a his one of his log trucks. Uh, Kevin tried and tried to to. He knew I was busy and and uh, anyway he he had a, a no turn signal on the left hand side on the trailer. The truck, everything on the truck was working. So I I had went out there and spent about an hour tracing it down, and I. Had, got cleared of the firewall and found out that it was something coming out of the, like that module coming out of the firewall or something there, or the plug-in coming out of the firewall. But anyway, I just ran it. There was a junction box right there on the truck side, and I just ran a jumper wire from the junction box to the pigtail for the trailer, and there you go. That'll get you by till I get time to trace down what's going on there. But anyway, um, this 1095, this kid, they got a rookie on here, this bell wagon, and and uh, when you're, the, he's got a couple fields here that are on a side hill and they're really steep. <clears throat> they're basically farming right on the side of the mountain. And it, I used to run bell wagon a whole lot when I was younger, and I know all about it. So when you're hauling hay in a bell wagon, and you got a steep hill like this, <clears throat> especially on small bells, small bells are different though. Actually, the big bells. It's better to load going downhill. Um, the s small bells, actually, we always like to load going uphill. <laughs> because on the small bells, if you were trying to, if you wanted to get up to the top of the hill and turn around and go downhill, you had your tiers that were up in your load rack. If you didn't have your second table up and you were still trying to haul hay and pick up hay in the field, the bells would fall out of the load rack if it was steep enough field. The tines wouldn't hold them in the load rack, and you'd be knocking. So we'd always load going uphill with small bells. But on the big bells, you're not worried about that too much, about the bells falling back out of the load rack. So anyway, uh, this kid was loading going uphill, and he got the rear end. It's kind of sandy ground around here, and so he got that rear end hopping in that sand. And... Uh, didn't let off the throttle good enough, and he broke something here. He broke either something ring and pinion or or uh, broke uh, broken axles, what I suspect. But uh, I'm I'm going around the side of this here, tapping on it. Uh, sometimes you can tell which side is broke by the different sound on them. But if they're broke far enough to where they're you know the links are about the same, you can't really tell. So. I couldn't really tell. I was going to just, just kind of guess in there. We're going to start on the left rear side and see if that's the one, which obviously you'll find out that, that it's not. So anyway, here we go. Hopefully 
just an accident. There's enough major damn projects going on right now. Hi, girly. silicone that on there it is not moving man huh wonderful wheel wedges in there Put them right back in. Going to the other side. Got a light shine down in the hole. I don't know if I can see anything in there. This one back in, there ain't nothing wrong with it. part of it out of there. I wonder if I can take put a long bar stick in there or something. Push it on out. Ugh. I'm going to bar Come in from the other side.
Down in there in a hole where I can't get it out. I can't even drag it out. It's down in a It's basically down in the rear end housing And that's a big chunk. We don't need floating around. There's another big chunk. I can't get It's like wedged in there or something. I took a bar and was trying to drag it towards me Maybe I'll try that again I, uh, there's no way I'm gonna get that other one out of there without pulling her end out of it <sighs> Hang on I need two hands for this <laughs> It's a lot further in there than you think it is if I got a bar long enough to get in there to well I don't know why I'm really wasting my time doing that and I gotta pull the rear end anyway to get that other piece out because there ain't no way in hell you're gonna ain't no way in hell you're gonna get that out of there from this side or the other side I guess we'll just Raise the load rack up in it, and well that t these these have two speeds on them too. And I wonder if the two speed. God, could you pull the two speed out? But it's on the wrong side, though. Uh. Oh shoot! I got all those uh, lug nuts and all that shit laying up there. One thing nice about a bow wagon is you can rear end, doing a rear end with a service truck ain't too bad. You can reach right over there and grab a hold of it and put it back in with a lifting eye. See, they got that big two-speed in, in over there, but there's no way you're going to reach across the rear end and get a, get a hold of that. All right, well, let me reposition the truck, get the crane out. Well, actually, I need to run up to their shop and get a drain pan, drain the oil. Let me go get a drain pan. these bolts they don't want to come off the socket
see that one up on top. Open this up again. Speed out of there or something? I don't think I had to pull. That's it. I don't remember having to pull that out. Get a hold of it with the crane. Yeah. Get a hold of it with the crane. finished the brake line off. It's already screwed up and I finished her off. Okay, there we go. That's what I was after right there. I'm going to pull it the rest of the way out so I can clean it up. Happy with that. We didn't screw up that darn Two speed. That drive line's kind of right in the way of everything. That's all right. She's out of there. There's another piece right here. chunk right here there's another chunk man a thing some stuck to the magnets in here Do these magnets come out on this one or this one here's moving around this magnet is it's got some pretty big chunks stuck to it Kind of thinking that might have been from an earlier failure and nobody ever pulled it out. Damn it, one. Can I reach one from here? I'll screw my silicone up. Is there a way?
our silicone. I think we're all right. for UPS to show up in a couple days with the axle. Should be the right one. There was only an option. So one option. Instead of the 1085 and the 95 had the same rear end in them. I'll wait to put oil in it. Let me get the axle back. Well guys, uh, that's just one of many things that I gotta go do today. I gotta run over, I got a hay squeeze broke down now. I gotta go run to now, so eventually I'd like to make it to the shop and do something there. Uh, all right guys, well, uh, it's gonna be in the 90s today, so that's hot for here, so. I got a D4D cat, and I got a pack car there with a head off I gotta do, and I can't ever seem to get there. It's like, so I got an IFL 9 Cummins in this hay squeeze that I overhauled about a year ago. And they said something happened to it. And I went over here a minute ago. I actually borrowed this squeeze a couple times last winter and drove it all the way. My wife bought a, oh, she's big time into chickens now. She's got hundreds and hundreds of chickens she's raising and selling the eggs and selling the chickens, which that's, that's fine. And she bought this giant building that was almost the size of a damn house over in Merrill. Well, I borrowed the hay squeeze from these guys to go over there and load it. And I, I drove that thing, put it on the floor, ran over there hard as I mean, just ran like a top. Nothing wrong, didn't use oil. And then it almost like it dropped a valve or something. Uh, it's popping, it's popping back to the intake, right in the middle of the road down here. I'm gonna go down here and see if we can pop the valve cover off and see what happened. I mean, it's like I was telling the guy the other day, I said, usually, I mean, if you did what you're supposed to do, you know, if it takes a year for something like that to come apart, usually it's a material failure, or it could be something I did. I know we're gonna find out. But, Usually, oh, if you didn't do something right on an engine job, you'll know right away. It'll come apart. It's had the shit run out of it since 
since I went through it. Kind of weird, actually, what's going on. I can't... Almost like we got a head problem and it dropped a valve or something. I mean, it's knocking pretty good. Something went to shit in it in a big way. Grommets here. Try not to lose them. Yeah, really far behind, and I really don't need problems like this. It's just been one thing after another here lately. What I'm going to do, so I don't lose these little rubber grommets, them out of there like that and then just put them in the valve cover and put the bolts back through it the way the bastards are accounted for Pull the Jake heads off this thing to see what happens. What's going on here? Something sure doesn't look right back here. Why does that one hell? Trying to see something maybe before I pull those off. Let me see it right now. Okay. Let's see here, okay. Which bolts do we take loose here? See I don't see anything there.
Now I see it. What happened here? Because it's tight. Did the valve stick open on it or something? One's tight. Look, there's quite a bit of valve last there though, didn't it? I never get to seem to ever get lucky enough to work and just uh, put it back together on the overhead, usually screw something up. So the ball socket's good there. That's good. Why? Why did that happen? Okay. I mean, I physically, that valve, they're both sitting at the same height. The stems are. So did it just... hell's going on here I need to suck up the valve lash for this realize I put that valve bridge on backwards. Let's take it back off, turn it around. Dumbass. I wonder if the cam's going flat in it. That's what I'm wondering. Let's look at this push rod. I don't see any evidence of that being an issue. I guess I'll start it with the valve cover off once I get the valves adjusted and we'll see if there's any lobe lift on this thing when it's running. Just drop my feeler gauges down here. way behind and I just don't need shit like this going on. Yeah, it's looser than hell, man. Well, I guess two times wrong, huh? Well, I mean, <laughs> kind of hard to tell the way these are set up. Oh man, I'm wondering if we got a cam, cam going bad in this thing. I don't like that either. Yeah, I don't like that either. Can't remember what size they are. What the hell happened there? I 
like something broke. I forgot you gotta take an Allen head after you pull that off so you can adjust them. These kind of suck. These kind of suck to deal with. Nope. Not too impressed with this style, I'll tell you that. With this whole style of adjuster and stuff, yeah, I'm just wow. It's like it's backed all the way out. Okay, that's weird, huh? Okay. That's really strange. Maybe something did move on it. Hmm. Interesting. Not really even sure what the hell happened there. It was backed off internally here. I know what I did last time. I took an Allen head like this. And I took... And that was supposed to jam it. Let me take that. And then what I did is I held this. Okay. Well, that ain't no twelve thousandths, I'll tell you that. I guess we better do them all. That ain't no good either. And I actually ran the overhead twice on this one. Got the little cover back screwed onto that, and I got this just kind of half-ass on here, so and the crossover tube on there. Everything's plugged in. Well, cross your fingers and hopefully it didn't do any damage to the valve. lucky. I'm going to park it and get it out of the road.
Okay, guys. All right. So I'm gonna work. I'm gonna sit down after I get done with this video because the audio sucks. And see if I can turn this stupid. Figure out how to turn this stupid wind reduction. That's what it is. That's GoPro won't fix their problem because that wind reduction setting they got on there is horrible. It just cuts all the audio out. That's what it does. Anyways, I'm gonna see if I can fix that. So thanks for watching, guys.